We're going to be opening up our Bibles to the book of John, John chapter 20. But before we get there, I've got to spit a little bit of vision. This fall, um, we have some incredible, incredible things coming. And uh, I'm going to take just a few moments to update you guys on some things that are happening with our Vintage Church family. And uh, this is going to be an amazing time together this morning. Thank you so much for being here. I love you guys with all my heart. It's been a crazy, crazy five weeks for me, all right? I have been on the road. We tallied it up, me and my wife. I think I've spoken like 25 to 28, something like that, nine times in the month of July. Um, Brick said that he's taking over. Pastor Brick said he's taking over how I do vacation next year um, because I actually need to rest. I'm running on fumes, to be honest. Uh, I haven't rested much at all, but... I want you to know that as I've traveled around the country, literally I've spoken in North Carolina and South Carolina, and I was just in Dallas with 4,000 plus church planners getting to speak at a conference there, um, getting to share all the things that God's doing in and through our church family. Here's one of the things that I'm learning as I travel and as I go to different places. It's only by the grace of God. I just want you to know that. Like, it's only by the grace of God. You see, in America, what we've done in America, especially with the church, is we have organized it in such a way, it's not our fault, we are completely free to worship Jesus in America. So because we are completely free to worship Jesus in America, we get real cute. And we get real smart. And we turn it into a business. And we strategize more according to our plans and according to what God's word says. And we begun, we, we begin to kind of hold more to our ability than God's ability to accomplish things. And I just want you to know, I just hung out the last week. Danny rolled with me and, and Jason and, and, and uh, Pastor Dustin. And we hung out with 4,000 plus church planners and leaders from all over the world. And I just want you to know, there's no perfect formula on how you live out the church. It really is only by the grace of God. To give you just a little bit of an idea of our story, this next month we're going to be celebrating five years. And five years ago, I wasn't ready. I mean, heaven forbid, I hadn't finished my seminary degree. God placed a call upon me and my wife's life to move from Gentilly into the uptown area. I was getting my degree at the seminary. And we had about a $350 to $400 a month rent. It's pretty nice. We had to move into uptown about $1,700 a month. And we had to take a leap of faith because God had called us to move into the uptown area and start a Bible study in our home. We didn't know it was going to be called this church name, Vintage Church. If you're trying to figure out the spiritual meaning behind this, there is really not one. When we were about 20 people, we said, we got to call this something or they're going to start calling us a cult. So uh, what y'all think? And I think it was like organic church. Praise God, that didn't happen. We, when we were polling people, we went to this one restaurant and these dudes were like, yeah, man, like... Organic church, man, that sounds all. Y'all smoke weed at that church, man? Like, like, no, 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 it's not that kind of church. Um, we drink some Kool-Aid, but not that kind of Kool-Aid. Um, and I think it was like UFC church, so Uptown Fellowship Church, which I like because I like the UFC, so uh, we didn't go with that. And then Vintage Church because, like, you go down Magazine Street and you see vintage this, vintage that, vintage this, and... We polled people, preferably people that weren't involved in the church for like two weeks, and it was unanimous. Ding, 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 we're Vintage Church. I don't even like the name that much, but that's what we are. So we're Vintage Church. And, and we began to meet together, and we started as one Bible study, and, and very quickly, for those of you who were with us, that one Bible study turned into three groups in that one Bible study. It was too much for us to handle. It was like 30 plus people in me and my wife's place. So what I did is I empowered two other leaders and for a season we trained them up and then we sent them out. All of a sudden we went from one community group to two community groups to three community groups and then we started to say, well, we miss each other. Let's rally together once a week to worship. So we started having worship gatherings. And as we gathered on Magazine Street right above a gym and a bar there and, and it was the place that God had for us, man, God did some amazing things. 
One of the people that was baptized was the principal of this school. And he had moved to New Orleans from Atlanta to start this school, a charter school in New Orleans. Isn't it awesome, God's grace, how God aligns things? Fast forward just a couple months ago, Mark meets with me, the principal of this school, and I'm just so honored to partner and provide backpacks for their kids here. And he's like, Rob, y'all running out of space at Rock and Bowl, man. Y'all wanna, y'all wanna come check out our school? I was like, yeah, man, like what's going on with your school? And he's like, well... The state has built us a pretty awesome facility, and, and we've got a gym. Y'all got enough room in that gym. Y'all want to check it out, and the rest is history. So God was just doing some amazing things, and, and, and one of the things that happened as we were one location in Uptown is that uh, a group started coming from Jefferson Parish. I mean, the mall people, right? And, and they started hanging out, and they're like, man, thank you so much. We're so excited about Vintage Church and all that, but we get parking tickets every time we come down to worship with you guys, right? You know, I mean, y'all don't like the mall. Like, I mean, what's going on? Where's the parking? And, and we started to get to love that church family that was coming, and groups started to multiply. And the leader of that group who was part of multiplying groups in Jefferson Parish is Pastor Griff, who is now in San Antonio planning his own church. I was just with him. And, man, God's grace is just all over it. But we started a second location. Kicking and screaming, we started a second location. It was not something that I planned for or wanted in the least bit. Well, then we fast forward a few more months. And as we're in two locations, still trying to figure this out, only by the grace of God are we surviving. This isn't some sort of, oh man, Rob is so wise. This is like shoot from the hip, let's figure this out as we go kind of stuff. Hurricane Isaac hits. Last fall, when Hurricane Isaac hit, it messed up our building, and we found ourselves as a Metairie campus meeting over in Lakeview. And the crazy thing happened, because we had begun to talk so much about gospel multiplication, multiply, 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 and we had already done it, the group that was hanging out kind of in the lakefront area, they said, could we stay and y'all go back when the building's fixed? I'm like, what? No, no, three locations, are you serious? I'm about dead. I'd like to see 35. But God called us. We didn't know what we were doing. Those of you who are part of our lakefront crew, (laughs) I mean, that was winging it, right? Only by the grace of God. We just were passionate about trying to reach people. And now we have three different locations. And as we started to form all this, we said, man, we kind of miss each other too. And yes, we want to be a church that uniquely connects in neighborhoods all over this city. How crazy is it that you can go from like one neighborhood to the next? And it's like a different country. That's what's so beautiful about this city, right? It's such a melting pot of cultures. We decided to start this thing called United, meeting under one roof. How awesome is it to get to see each other once a month and celebrate all that God's doing in Orleans Parish and Jefferson Parish? And Guys, I just want you to know, I stand before you right now as a man and as your pastor clinging so strong to the grace of Jesus. I'm not standing before you as one who's now traveled over the last five weeks and I've come home with a formula. And if we would just follow these five steps, ding, 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 I get more Twitter followers. We get to write books. Ding, 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 our buildings will be filled up. Ding, 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 we'll have all the money in the world. I just want to be real with you if that's all right. It's only by the grace of Jesus. And this is what I want to share with you this morning. As we go into the fall, it's time for Vintage Church, for a season, to put the sway bars back on. Let me explain. Pastor Brick and myself, one of our residents, his name is Marshall Henderson. He's serving a church on the West Bank that has also helped us, that's praying about becoming a part of our church family. Four locations, freaking out. And Pastor Brick's wife, who's carrying their little one, we're on the road about three weeks ago. And we're headed over to the North Shore. Why are we headed over to the North Shore? Because there's about 30 to 40 people who drive the causeway every Sunday to come and worship with us from the North Shore. And they've begun to talk with us. Would you mind, would you consider starting something on the North Shore? Five locations, really freaking out. 
So we're over there and we're gonna have a worship service and we've got this big church in a box trailer that God has blessed us with where literally we can just church in a box. You unpack the box, you have worship together. And we're riding this thing with the van and Pastor Brick's driving and I'm trying to write a sermon, downloading off of freesermon.com, just kidding. And, uh, and, and I'm trying to get ready to speak and all this kind of stuff. So, so we get across the causeway, we make it, then we take a left turn on 12 there and as we take a left turn on 12 I don't know if Britt got excited or what happened but we started going probably a little bit too fast and and all of a sudden I'm just chilling trying to enjoy my Starbucks my quad shot cafe Americano and I look over to my left and the trailer that's supposed to be behind me is on the side of me I immediately break 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 breaks breaks we start like moving and swaying so bad, traffic stops on both sides. I'm like, yep, they're gonna hear Vintage Church has arrived on the North Shore. (laughs) This is one way to get get, get the word out, right? And, and as it's swaying like this, I'm just praying immediately. I'm thinking about Sarah, who's carrying this little one. I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do if we start to tip over? I'm just going to hug her. I'm just going to take whatever I can, brick, tap the brakes, tap the brakes, tap the brakes. And by the grace of God, again, we stopped. I mean, it was so crazy. We've got our logo on our trailer and everything else. You should have seen the people passing us. It was like jaws draw. You know, and and Brick, Brick's, you know, he's Protestant, but he became Catholic at that moment. Like he was just, he was hardcore, man, doing the cross. I mean, doing the whole thing. Like, I mean, it was, it was intense. And man, we just praise God. We roll in and we make it to our North Shore destination. And, and man, we just thank the Lord together. Me and Marshall, like I'm still shaking, just thinking about it. And we had a worship gathering. And God began to speak to me in that time. Guys, from the very beginning of our church family, man, we have had one amazing ride. And there is no doubt that I believe every single step, maybe, maybe, maybe we've missed a few steps. I mean, maybe you guys are absolutely perfect in determining the will of God. But sometimes the only way I really know whether or not I've made the right decision is I have to look in the rearview mirror. Oh, okay, I got that one. But isn't God great? That even sometimes when we step out of line or when we get overambitious or we start to do certain things, and man, uh, these have all been great things. We have just had at the heartbeat of Vintage Church a desire to live the gospel, love the city, and be the church. And I don't know if you know this, but if you look around or hang out in our city, there's a ton of people that need Jesus. And I just refuse to sit back and chill telling everyone else to go to hell. I'm going to do whatever I can in this life to get them the gospel. And we're going to do whatever we can in this life to get them the gospel because the only thing that matters in this world is Jesus. We've got to be wise. God has called us to a destination. When we landed in the North Shore, we went back and looked to make sure everything was together and with all of our moving around to different campuses with this trailer, someone had forgotten to put the sway bars on. And, and here's the reality. We were going on a destination, and, and we needed to get to that destination, but maybe because we were going so frantically and because we were so stretched we missed out on some really important details and if you know anything about trailers I'm not the most uh, high-tech you know skilled person in the world but I do know this it's not like Brick was going to be yelling at me as we're still going hey dude jump out the back window it's time to put the sway bars on we've got a destination we got to make worship service we're not going to stop I need Rob for you to try and kill yourself by putting the sway bars on Sometimes in order for you to put the sway bars on, what have you got to do? You got to stop. You got to chill. You got to evaluate. You got to assess. I want to introduce to you something. I've got a banner up here. This is called All In. 
all in. And this fall, starting September for our United, this next month, we are continuing on with the plan of having three locations, okay? Myself, your pastor, I'm coming to every location all month. And I'm gonna preach the gospel to you. One week, our campus pastors are gonna bring the word. And during this month, we are going to be preparing ourselves, making plans together. Your lead pastor, together with his pastoral team and other leaders, have been praying, okay, Lord, what would it mean for us to stop long enough to put the sway bars on? Because we have been called to a destination, and that destination is worthless if we all die before we get there. So, so what could we do to make ourselves as a church family healthier, stronger, so that we continue to be faithful to the destination that God's called us to pursue? And, and we're going to be doing this thing called All In. It's threefold. The first is this, and this is going to be on Saturday night, September 7th. Now, for all of you guys who are Saints fans, you know that Sunday, September 8th, is a big day. Okay, it's our Super Bowl. We're playing against the Falcons to open up the season. And we just wanted to hang out with you guys, so we knew it would be like committing suicide to try and have church on Sunday morning when we're about to play the Falcons. So we are renting out Dixon Hall on Saturday night at Tulane University. And we want to encourage you guys on Sunday to go and live the gospel, love the city, and be the church if you don't have season tickets. If you do, hook a brother up. And, and, and we want you to host parties at your house to watch the game. Everyone and their mother in this city is going to be watching our saints pound the Falcons. Who that? So we're going to rally September 7th, Saturday night together. And this is going to become the official launch of our All In. From that point forward to the end of the year, our church family every weekend is going to meet in one location. And this is going to be a season for us to put the sway bars on, for us to encourage one another, inspire one another, for us to rally together. And as we rally together, right now the location is Rock and Bowl. We're going to be meeting at Rock and Bowl every week. We're going to literally cause problems with the fire marshal. And we're going to rally there, and then, pa and then uh, Mark, the principal here, he's told us that, man, if, if we run out of room, we can come back here and rally here. This is great being here. I love partnering. But we're going to start out Rock and Bowl because it's the most central with all of our locations. And until at least the fall, we're going to rally in one location. The second element is this, partner. This fall, we're meeting next month, this month, with all the CG leaders and all the staff, and we are re-implementing what you call in church world membership. Some of you have asked, how can I be a part of Vintage? Well, you are, <laughs> right? And, and here's the thing. This is part of the journey that I've been on. When we first started Vintage, I read way too many reformed anger guys, and we had hardcore membership. I'm telling you, there's people with tattoos, and if you didn't fulfill all your duties of membership, literally, I would send letters and kick people out. It was nasty. I mean, like, what was I thinking, trying to be hardcore like that in the big easy? Don't fly. So we said, all right, well, this is the big easy. Let's just have no membership. And if you plug into a community group or you volunteer or whatever else, then you're part of the membership. So we went to the other side. Remember, I'm just telling you this. We wing a lot of things here. And we started to see that, yes, even though people were motivated and stuff, that also it started to hurt us because real discipleship wasn't happening, accountability, growth. So we've come back, and we're starting what our membership is called this, Vintage Partners. And we're going to be welcoming you to attend what we call I'm a VP. I'm a Vintage Partner. And this is going to be a time for us to put the sway bars on. This is going to be time for us at our Lakefront campus, at our Metairie campus, at our Uptown campus to find out who's our strong foundational leadership on each campus. So that's something that we're going to do. But the third element, you see it on the screen behind me, is we're going to multiply. This is not a move to stay in one location. This is a move to better serve people in multiple locations. 
See, there's no point in us multiplying, multiplying, multiplying if we ain't got nothing to give. So we're going to this fall unite. We're going to this fall partner. We're going to this fall multiply. Would y'all pray with me as we get ready to hear the word of God? Lord Jesus, we love you so much. God, I was, I was just, I was so humbled and, and floored this past week as I was in Dallas speaking at a conference with 4,000 plus leaders from around the country. And God, as I got to share the different things that you've taught me in this ride, I, I just, I was just so humbled. Lord, by how awesome you are. Because as I find stories of significant impact around our country and around our globe, I don't find stories of brilliant men and women. I don't find stories of incredible strategies. I, don't find, I only find stories of your faithfulness and grace. We're kidding ourselves if we think this is our church. You are our senior pastor. You are our Lord. God, in this moment, we have prayed, we have fasted as a leadership, and we just believe that right now, we got to put some sway bars on this fall. God, we believe with all our heart that we're listening to you, but we know that even if we're stepping out of sync with your will, God, your grace is so much greater than anything we do. And we believe that you've called us to be Vintage Church here in New Orleans. We're thankful, Lord, as I look out upon these backpacks. God, we're thankful to fill a backpack and to write an encouraging card to a student that we don't even know about your gospel. We're thankful for the evidences of your grace over each and every little boy, little girl that's going to receive these. God, I thank you for the evidences of your grace over every single person that assembles with us here this morning. God, I thank you for what you've done in their life to bring them to this place. And God, much like in anything, I can't keep them with us. It's only you and your call. But God, I do pray and I do believe that you're going to send an army to rally around us to help us get stronger this fall. Because you have within your heart the thousands upon thousands of people in this city that don't know you. And Lord Jesus, we make ourselves available as Vintage Church to live the gospel, love the city, and be the church. So empower us, Holy Spirit. Bless your word as it's preached briefly this morning. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen.